So, new update to the V12 project. I got the rear suspension and the rear wheel hub fully, uh, fully done. It's all new. New back plate. There's a new uh, brake disc. I got the uh, Brembo brakes, Brembo, Brembo disc, and Brembo uh, brake pads. I also got uh, the internals of the handbrake are all new. So, new, uh, all new stuff in here. Also, new wheel bearings. All the bushings are new underneath the underside. So I got everything fitted now with the with the rubber mounts in there. Everything is greased and up to uh, torx spec. So it's all done here in the rear. Only the axle and the differential needs to go in. But um, I cannot mount the diff now in there. Yeah, I can do that, but I have to drop it a little bit because my uh, my axle is a little bit too long to get the uh, to get it out without dropping the differential so there's a little bit modification and this about a millimeter work but I don't want to push it so I just do it like this so I also got the top mounts inside uh, inside the trunk I also painted so I don't have to dismantle anything here so this is all done but also busy with is uh, uh, refurbish my uh, brakes so I got this these uh, calipers for you dismantle these are already painted in heat resisted paint and baked so it's all done so for the people who don't know how a rear uh, or how a brake uh, caliper works is you got i don't know if you can see that i put it in the light maybe that's better if you can see in here this is where normally you your piston is is sitting i put it put it back So you got a few rings. It's a little bit messy here, but so as you can see, this is a ring that's normally around it, inside like this. It's around it, a little bit downwards. So this is what closing in the gap from the oil compartments. Look like this. So this ring is normally inside there. So then your piston is in. Your piston is in and it's closed off by this ring. On top you got a seal, a rubber seal. That's go that's what all what you always see. This seal is on top. And that will close off to that there's not getting any moisture in it. So you have one intake and the bleed. This is always on the top, so it's mounted like this. Then there's oil channels that go through here, get, getting in here, the oil channels going over there, and then it's going all around. Also the other side, I don't know if you can see that it's pretty bad to see, but there's a small hole. Have a look if I can. I don't have enough light. But there is, it's, the channels are all around, uh, all around to the caliper. So that's, and what I did, I dismantled it. You can see there's still a little bit of, I don't know if you can see, it's still a little bit of dirt because these brakes were laying around, I think, more than a few years. So you got a little bit of moisture on it. You can see here still a little bit. So they get stuck. So if you, for example, you get the one side is stuck and the other side is not, then that is the only side that's pressing on the brake, on the disc, and then you get a different then it's not, uh, then you get a difference in between the left side and the right and that sort of stuff. So I just want to have new stuff in it. It just cost me, I think to refurbish about 100 euros on parts, new seals, everything in it. So that's an easy thing. They, I ordered it, but it's not, not here yet. So uh, that's getting here soon. Also, I got the front hubs. I redone, cleaned it. They all painted now. There are new bearings inside everything new grease in it so it's they all like new so they only have to be mounted and then uh, i can put the wheels on it i wanted to get the front uh, fenders off but if i open my door on the bridge with no wheels i cannot reach there are three bolts in here i cannot reach them because the door is uh, at maximum angle so i have to get it on the wheels first and then i can get my front fenders off it's a little bit shitty. I want to do it right now, but yeah, I have to. I can put the wheels on in the back. There can be a wheel on. I just have to mount the <coughs> the front hub 
and a disc on it and then I can just put the wheels on I can put the handbrake on so I think I'm going that's the next one I'm going, what I'm going to do if I got everything ready in the engine bay so what I also have done is installed the throttle total body and the wire so it's all working now so this is the original uh, wire inside I put a new uh, cable uh, holder on it so this is the original throttle cable from the 190 so this one is, what is nice is on this aftermarket throttle body is that there are more points you can put something in. So if this throttle body uh, is pulling this throttle body, it will also open the other side. So if I adjust this one, you can see the other one is also reacting. So that's working pretty good. So there's no play in this cable. I have to have a look later when I got the sensors on, I can see with the laptop uh, if they are reacting right away, otherwise I have to put this cable a little bit more tight and so I got the same throttle angle when I open this one, the other one is also, and I have to have the look to show to 100% uh, that they are doing the same. So that's what I've also done, the cable is uh, all the way in the back here, it's through the hinge points of the, of the engine block. I think it's pretty, I can just leave them like this, I think that's the best way then, the corner, the bend in the cable is not that big, so uh, that's the best way to do it, I think. So also, the cooling system is almost done, so I've got my, uh, uh, how do you say that, cooling pipe installed, so the mounting is like the original point, almost, so now I only have to get a cable from here to the tank, or uh, a hose. That's the only thing that needs to be done. So um, that's the next thing. The pipe is connected all the way here. It's not welded through completely because it's not completely done. So it's going in here. Then I got a second pipe that's going to the top of the engine. This is original. This piece and to the radiator. That's all original. From here, this is an original. This is an original pipe. Sorry about the camera angle. This original pipe, I cut it here, with a new hose on it, it will fit nice, it will be all tightened up when it's going in there for the last time. Then it's going through the firewall panel, or the firewall panel, or the separation panel. I only have to mount in here to the, to the heater, but it's not reachable with the engine in. Yeah, I can do it, but it's, it's easier when the engine is outside. The last piece I will then do later on. Then I also got uh, the other pipe connected. It's the outside of the heater that's going to be uh, to back to the cylinder head. So this will uh, this is all connected. The only thing I need to do is the plate that's in here. I need to I can now make the hole in the in the plate, so the hose can go through, and I have to uh, get uh, this hole located for the throttle body uh, or for the throttle cable. So then I can uh, build the plate back in, that's it. So, and uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get, uh, have to have a look if I can reuse these oil lines of, uh, or get new ones made, because these are pretty old, I think. And I have to, uh, so I have to sort out the uh, cooling lines for the oil, and I have to uh, mount the transmission cooling lines. So from the transmission underneath the car to the cooler on the right side. So the, that was that needs also so to be done. If that is all done, then the only thing that needs to be made is the exhaust. But um, I'm first going to get the engine on the wheels then, because I want to have a look how bad the rust spots are in here. And I know there is a hole on both sides, so I have to do that so I'm first going to now to uh, get the uh, new uh, oil lines made for the transmission because I got oil lines but they are too long of course because they are from the S class but I can use the connections and that sort of stuff so that's what I'm going to do and then put the car on the wheels it will be too low I know that already because the suspension setting on the front is like it should be when it's uh, on its wheels so this should be the right height when it's when the weight is on it so I have to uh, I'm going to get this about two centimeters to three centimeters lower and have a look what then the right height is. So the outside 
length of, the, of this tire, the original tire is about the same length as my uh, 18-inch wheels that will be mounted. So I'm first going to check if the right height is okay and how far it's dropping. And then I can uh, repair the inside of the both wheel wells. And uh, if that is all done, then uh, I will paint the insides, but that's much later, I think. So first get the oil lines done, get the car on the wheels, and then uh, make this all done. The, how you say that? The cooling pipes need all to be welded on, and then we will see what the next thing is. So it's, it's getting there, and I'm waiting on parts and that sort of stuff for my brakes. But the rear is almost completely done, only the brakes need to be put on. And then that's, that part is completely done and coated, so uh, the underbody is completely ready. And then it's only on the front, I have to do the uh, exhaust, oil lines, and if that is all done, paint the inside of the engine bay. When that is done, I have to do the electronics, and that's it. And I get the car uh, driving, and get my registration redone on this particular car, because I have to do, uh, because I changed the engine and the registration needs to be read loop test so because I changed the engine so we will see how that goes so I'm getting there but it is um, it's waiting for pass I want I hope to have to do that there were more things done already but uh, yeah it's not it's going slowly but it needs to be good so I'm going I buy I buy the right parts and the most parts are all original brakes are Brembo's I had to wait for them uh, a while but uh, I've got it all there I don't know if I showed it in the last video, but I got all the bushings in. They're from a company that's in Poland, and that is called Strongflex. And uh, they are cheaper than, uh, than for example, Hed Hedgehog uh, bushings. Hedgehog is, was the only one that I know that made uh, Uritan bushings for this, for the 190. But uh, this particular company is making bushings for the complete car including everything your shift frame all that sort of stuff also for your stabilizer bars and i think a complete set will cost you about 338 euros and that's for sure 80 that's red they also have sure 90 that is a yellow color but that's even stiffer and uh, i think uh, that's their they say their sure 80 is the normal road version I think Shore 80 is already pretty hard because Shore 80 is a little bit harder than new rubber bushings. And uh, I think this is the best option. So it's getting there. So uh, I hope to get the last things done. And then the only thing I need to need to do, to do is the exhaust of the underneath the car. And I think that I'm going to do that after I got the engine bay painted because then it's all nice and tidy. So uh, we will see. So I hope you like this uh, update. On this project, if you want to, miss, uh, to see more about this uh, build, there is a playlist and you can see all the things I've done before, like engine fittings and that sort of stuff. So I hope you like this project. Give a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you've got any suggestions, or uh, you always can ask me or tell me. Load the video in the description. There's a link to my website, jnspeedshop.com. Have a look there. I always try to place a lot of pictures with it. So I uh, hope you like it. So. Uh, See you for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.